Hey everyone, Jace from Alphatone Audio back again. And do you happen to know what the number one question I get from customers is nowadays? Not only on all the products that I have, but on custom stuff that they may want to make. The number one question without a doubt is, how do I get my Chase Bliss pedal to work with my MIDI box? I, I want, really want to love TRS MIDI, uh, but I, I kind of just can't because when I was just kind of researching doing this, I wanted to do a complete video on TRS MIDI. But you begin to research all the different issues that people are having and all the different manufacturers and all the different ports. I decided that it was just a massive rat hole and I just didn't even want to get into it. Uh, some of the manufacturers say it saves us cost, it saves us space on the pedal, but then that cost just ends up getting passed on to the consumer because then they have to buy something which is practically the size of pedal. These things are what, like $95, I think. Plus, and especially if you have a pedal by some manufacturers that don't even follow the TRS standard, then you have the additional cost and hassle of buying special made cables just to get it plugged in. So I like it in concept, however, in execution, I think it was handled incredibly poorly by a lot of the manufacturers and I end up doing a lot of customer support on their behalf. Anyway, I like to solve problems and to make the customers happy, so I do it no problem. But I did want to focus today on specifically how to get TRS MIDI cables working between your Chase Bliss pedals and your MIDI box. Now, the one that I'm specifically going to show uh, comes from Maris. Uh, they've been very helpful with me on a couple of these things. I have a specification for them on how they actually recommending uh, you to wire up your cables for your Chase Bliss and their MIDI I.O. box. So I have do have a Disaster Area Designs box here. Um, these actually do have jumpers on the inside that will swap tip and ring, which is the, the main difference between the Chase Bliss, is they actually uh, change the way that MIDI is sent, uh, depending on what pin they use. Uh, so you do have a pin swap capability in here, but in case you're using a different kind of MIDI box and it does not have jumpers in there that allow you to switch between tip and ring, then this is the cable that you're going to need. So let's build one. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about this cable is it is directional because the two ends are not terminated the same way. Now, as you can see here from the diagram, I'm gonna start on the Chase Bliss side. Um, you both basically, the tip is not used, it's floating here in this diagram, and I believe they reserved that for tap tempo, I think. We're only just gonna use the ring here for the MIDI. Technically, you could use an unbalanced cable for this, but since I build normal TRS MIDI cables as well, I actually just use standard microphone cable for these just to be consistent among my TRS MIDI cable offerings. However, in the cases where on Chase Plus side, like here you saw on the diagram, both cables are gonna go down to the ring. I just take the two conductors and they get tied off together. So, and I already have these prepped and ready to go. I'm using the Switchcraft 236, and I'm using some uh, Mogami 2552 standard gray microphone cable on this. And I've already tinned off the back of my 236 here. So, I've already, like I said, I've already got this tinned and ready to go. The way I like to assemble these is I'm just gonna slide this in from the side, and then pull this around. Then, Tighten your wings down. And just get a slightly different position on this. It's a little more than I need. I always, because I end up doing a lot of wrapping around the different solder tabs on these, I always strip off a th full three quarter inch. On these, I always give myself a little bit of extra length to snake this through and then trim after the fact. So this is the ring here. Get that soldered in place. Yep, and then I've done a video on this before. It's because I really like the Switchcraft 236s. Um, and I like to take the shield around to the back because you have a lot of clearance inside the barrel. So wrap that around, vice grips to grab the shield, and then a bit of solder. Let me just clip it off. And that's one side. Take our insulator and our barrel. Turn it 
Put that out, that looks good. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put a sticker on this. I'm gonna call these different sides. CB for Chase Bliss and Maris. I always, always recommend if you're ever kind of building an oddball cable like this, any kind of like reverse polarity thing, kind of like do you ever have like a crossover Cat5 cable, how they're always like bright yellow so you would know not to use them for a normal connection. Same kind of thing, always label the oddball cables. Or else you grab what you think it's normal and you end up with a troubleshooting nightmare, such as a standard paper label. And I'm gonna put some clear heat shrink over that. And I'll shrink that down after I get the other end. And I'm gonna label both ends, just so there is no doubt. Okay, now as we get into the other side, tip and ring get tied together. So on this side I have, again, the two conductors. They are just braided together and that whole thing is tinned. And I'm gonna do this the same way to the other side. I'm just gonna take that. I'm gonna run it through the side. Kind of pull this around. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm going to run it through the tip. You can, just a little bit of help, some needle nose. Secure these down. Again, you don't need anything to really extend past the solder tab, for sure. So trim that off. And I'll just get this nice and flush. Okay. Then we'll secure this. Tip. Okay, and then once again, flip over. Secure the shield. Screw that. So now get the labels going. And there you have it. One Chase Plus to Mar Maris MIDI IO port cable completed. I've been doing these a while now, and so far I have a 100% success rate with the customers on this. Uh, usually when someone's deciding whether they want to order this or not, there's, there's always a conversation that happens before, just to make sure it's like, hey, do I need the standard one or do I need the reverse polarity one? And so far every single person that's ordered one has gotten back to me and said that this fixed their problems and they have all their MIDI flowing as it should be. So again, TRS MIDI, um, it's cool, I guess, unless you're confused, unfortunately, like a lot of people. So I uh, hope this was helpful. If you did find it helpful, please uh, give me a like and a subscribe. I would certainly appreciate it, and I will see you next time.